Hi, this is Mary Lawrence Bevington of Mary B. Spiritual Council for People, Pets, and Businesses. This is an energy check on February 25th, 2020. For the next several days that we're moving into, professionally, I read energy, and when I make the energy check videos, such as this one, I sit in meditation and I read the energy and essentially come up with what might be happening atmospherically for all of us. You could almost think of it as a little bit like a mundane astrology reading or an energy reading for the world. I'm in the Western Hemisphere in the Intermountain area of Colorado, not too far from Denver. And when I checked in, three themes arose and they were clarity, change, and dreams. So let's start with clarity. I, I tuned in to a, a need for clarity to be happening. It put me in mind of a, a Dutch word, nukter, which essentially means sober, uh, practical. You might almost think of the Dutch people as nukter. Um, my Dutch friend who taught it to me said that it doesn't necessarily quite translate into the English language. And the way I translate it now is to find my own clarity I ground, so eating good food is a nice way to ground. For example, um, I happen to be uh, having sandbags on my lap right now. There's three of them. They each weigh, I don't know, a few pounds, a little like a, a, a little tiny infant baby on my lap. And that's helping me feel grounded and of this earth uh, and not heavy, but supported and able to actively yield into the support that is this uh, magnificent abundant planet that we all live on live on i also have a couple tools to suggest to work with clarity one is the stone selenite um, this is an example of selenite here it it's um gypsum like all push together. Um, gypsum is quite good for luck and protection. And then the selenite takes it to a new level. In some ways, it, it activates the crown chakra. It activates the third eye chakra. So boop, right there. Uh, and um, both of these are really great for enhancing intuition Knowingness is an aspect of what you might think of with the, the crown chakra, that sense of, I know what's happening. I have, I have a strong feeling. I can't explain it, but I know it. Um, and then clairvoyance, the, the ability to see clearly is associated with the third eye. And that's essentially my job when I do a reading I try to tell truth from lies with my clients. So if a client needs a bit of clarity, I try to essentially help them with that, that clear vision, that clear seeing. And another fun tool to work with with clarity is um, artemisia. This is a tincture of artemisia. Um, it's a plant. It actually grows natively where I live. In fact, on the property that I'm on, it is all over the place and almost looks like a sage. I think its common name might be mugwort. You might need to look that one up, but um, you can just put a little bit of it and a little bit of water and then you drink it up and it uh, will help bring on a little bit of clarity. So uh, super fun little uh, allies in our journey towards clarity in this time of February 25th, 2020, moving towards March, and may it come in roaring like a lion, we shall see. Uh, the next bit change here is something that in the Sanskrit tradition, there's even a word, anicca, which is, just means impermanence. We're constantly 
working with change. You can never step into the same river. We're always in a flow. Uh, already as I speak, my words are in the past. They've become abstract. So yes, change. Okay, it's happening. We got it. Uh, the change is a little bit fast right now. It's like kind of faster than normal. So, and you may have even noticed in the last few years, almost like a, a gradual build of change. So that's really what came in when I was doing the energy check is that change is really pronounced right now. Like you might almost feel like, whoa, oh yeah, Mary said to ground, I got to get some sandbags because things are getting buffeted or maybe someone rushes at you with their energy or all of a sudden there's a massive change at work or someone maybe leaves the earth that you're close to. I mean, there, there's a lot, a lot happening and uh, now and, and soon as Humphrey Bogart would say uh, it's, it's a, it's a powerful time in that way. So some, some tools to work with that, uh, with this idea of crystal healing and support from the geological world, the earth world, um, this is a labradorite necklace. Um, labradorite is a stone that was found in Labrador, Canada initially. So like uh, many stones, rocks, minerals, they are often named after where they were first found. Uh, now it is uh, mined in Norway and Finland and Russia and Australia and all manner of other spots, but uh, it is still Labradorite and quite sweet stone. I'll show you another little image of it. Um, it uh, this is just a piece. You might be able to see it has almost like an iridescent otherworldly quality. So similar to selenite, it has a way of protecting us and it also brings out a little bit of intuition. It's thought to give a bit of a shield with our aura, which is almost like an act of healing. So we have electromagnetic frequency, our aura that comes out from us, just like a kitchen appliance. We have electromagnetic frequency or your internet router that's perhaps near you right now that's running this internet video so the that electromagnetic frequency sometimes gets a bit ajar it might get a tear in it it might get a little whirr so the labradorite has a way of just uh, helping it recharge heal balance and um, I tell you what I have a neck injury and um, this thing feels just fabulous on my neck. It's like this kind of glorious, um, really comforting stone. So um, I'm really digging it. And I will also say that another stone you might dig is the rose quartz, um, famous, um, named after the rose flower, the rose color. And um, this one's in the shape of uh, a tumbled kind of worry stone. So it's smooth. It fits right into the palm of my hand. It feels really comforting. And this is more just if your emotional zone gets a little nutty, kooky, zaza, woo woo, you can get your rose quartz and maybe put it near your bed and draw it in to, to help just feel a little nicer. Um, it has many other properties, just like the other two stones I mentioned. Um, one of my other favorite things about rose quartz is if you are bringing uh, love in, um, it's a lovely attractor in that sense. It, it can really charge up the healing from love, the attraction, the connection of love. So rose quartz super sweet and and then working with uh, dreams um that was the third big theme that came in so my world of dreams right now is quite big three-dimensional quite real it's as if the person in my dream is right there and maybe i'm pinching myself maybe i'm receiving a message maybe i've been deliberating over 
uh, something I'd like to get clarity with because I'm going through a change. And then all of a sudden the dream comes in and, uh, oh, you know, this old friend came into my dream and he just said, do this. And it's a message. So you don't always have to say, oh yeah, okay, that's a message. So I'm definitely going to do that for sure. Um, what you can do action item wise is you can do a little journaling, um, little meditation to bring on the dream world, um, to literally invite it in. Um, a nice stone for dreaming is amethyst, um, which this is a geode with amethyst and some quartz and fun stuff in there. But that amethyst rock um, has a way of taking us on these shamanic journeys. So a rock like this, or maybe a much smaller one, if you wish, you can, you can put it right on your bedside table. So when you go to sleep, uh, it will invite in the dreams. And I love also to um, work with just pure water. So a little hydration, uh, some good water to really fill my body. Uh, in Colorado, it's semi-arid, you know, a notch above a desert. So literally we cannot get enough water here. So I do my best with it. I'm probably still dehydrated even as I speak right now. And at the same time, um, the water invites the dreams. So a fun thing I learned, I studied Ayurveda in India, and um, what, one of the things that we practiced was actually to not drink water right before you go to sleep. Like don't slam a glass of water, mainly because you're going to have to get up and go to the bathroom. And that's probably going to interrupt your deep sleep stages. So may I suggest having water near, maybe in a copper cup, and just sipping it a little bit before you go to sleep, but letting your hydration happen more so through the day. And uh, on the heels of the journaling comment, you can always have that dream journal right by your bedstand as well. And that's it for the energy check. Um, three quickie agenda calendar items for you coming up. I have a Huga Yin Yoga workshop at Tasman's Healing Center, Conifer, Colorado, March 21st. That's a Saturday, Vernal Equinox, Mountain Time, 1.30 to 3.30. It's going to be glorious and act as an antidote to that powerful energy of, of spring. It, it's going to give us a little bit of a, a resting zone, a, a soothing comforting place to come to. And then on April 11th, this is all 2020, I am going to do live readings at Luna's Mandala, also in Conifer, Colorado. And that'll be from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Most of my reading is like this online or on the telephone, the cellophone, the telefonino. Uh, so uh, having a live one is pretty sweet. It's really interesting, in fact. Uh, and then lastly, on April 25th, I'm going to go to Nairobi, Kenya for 12 days to help Moja 2. They are a wonderful nonprofit that helps youth in Kenya go to grandma school, high school, and college. And I absolutely cannot wait. Um, I have the opportunity to teach the Moja 2 kids yoga, as well as hopefully some meditation and to make care packages. I'm going to do a fundraiser. Uh, it's just going to be glorious. So with that, everybody give yourself a nice exhale. Let your vagus nerve relax, one of your cranial nerves. And then a nice big inhale. See so if you can get the breath belly to chest all the way up into where thymus gland the clavicles are you might sense it go up into your head and then a full breath out again and i so appreciate this opportunity to be with you today if you'd like a reading please go to my website you can book an appointment online www.marybevington.com 
www.sharonmartinsmedium.com. And if you've never received an energy reading or spiritual counsel, I highly recommend it. I get it myself um, about once a week, sometimes even more than that, and from another person that I trade with. I also am a part of a, a line reading. We do them for Aspen Oracle, and that's actually three people reading one person, and then we even have a fourth person who holds space for us. Amazing experience. It's actually how I first came to energy readings. Um, it's quite remarkable what can be achieved from those readings and and how it can sort of shift your life and then also the healing work that occurs during them all right y'all stay tuned also i'm gonna get my patreon page live right now it's kind of dormant uh it's sleeping but i'm gonna wake it up soon okay um take care and please feel free to share and subscribe and all that fun stuff all right bye bye